Today on Startup Hustle, we're going to meet Mike Moyer. We're going to do a quick interview about how startups should split up equity. He is the founder of Slicing Pie, a platform startups often use to split up equity when it's in the bootstrap stage, trying to get to the first round uh, of financing. So this should be pretty exciting. We are getting him right here at the UI Labs. Stay tuned. We're going to answer all of your questions about splitting equity. If you're in a startup, chances are you have co-founders, you have employees, and you're trying to figure out how to properly split equity across all of the members, depending on how much work they put in, how much cash they brought to the table. And it's always a very complicated question, uh, especially when somebody's actually leaving the company. Maybe one of the founders want to leave. Maybe they're trying to start another company, or they got recruited in another company, or one of the employees resigned, and you're really trying to find out what do we do with his or her share of the, uh, the company. Those are some very important questions every founder, every startup must answer, especially if you're going into raising Series A funding. Um, so these are some of the questions that I have that I want to ask Mike and, and he can shed some light on how a startup should go about it. How do you create a dynamic equity split and not a static one that we're all aware of like 60-40 or 50-50. Those are great, but they don't always work with every kind of organization. So those are some of the pain points that startups have, especially when it uh, gets into a fight between the founders and you have some um, some tough conversation to have with your co-founders and you might have you might be best friends today but you might not even be friends after you split the equity so this is some critical questions that every startup need to have so I hope we get some answers from Mike about how exactly do we go about splitting up equity What I tell people is this is a universal, one-size-fits-all solution for every startup coming on the planet that's bootstrapping. The exact same model will work anywhere in the world exactly as outlined. Every other model on the planet leads you down the wrong path. Only slicing pie will give you an exact equity split. So Mike, tell me a little bit about yourself. Give me a quick overview of how this book came about and what you're doing and all the great stuff that you're working on. Well, I, uh, I've been an entrepreneur most of my career. Starting when I was in college, I started a company that did t-shirts for fraternities and sororities. And then I did some more startup work and I started another company when I was in graduate school at University of Chicago. And again, I didn't know how to do the equity split very well. I didn't know how to approach it. Um, and then my following startup again, I ra we raised another, a lot of money for it. And the uh, equity split was kind of strange to me. It didn't really feel right. And throughout those experiences, I realized there really isn't very good advice in the world about equity splits. In fact, most of the advice people get is just plain wrong. The conventional thing about equity splits is you and I go into comp business together, we will split it 50-50 because we're buddies. And then you do all the work, I do nothing, and I keep half your company. That's true. It happens all the time. I yeah. see it on the profit. So you're proposing completely different. So I want to know what it is that you propose. How did you come about the strategy that you came out? Did you do research? Well, I sat down and wrote some criteria. I wanted something that was perfectly fair. I wanted to reward actual contributions rather than people with the, with the promises people make. Because people right. I might sign up with you and say, I'm going to be a great marketing person. i got a huge Rolodex. It's going to be awesome. We're going to sell a it's ton of this. To and then exactly. not do anything. It's happened to everybody. <laughs> it's happened to me. I'm literally speaking right. the truth. Yeah. And you might be thinking, hey, this is going to be a $100 million company. So if I give you 1%, that's going to be a million dollars I'm giving you. So that's so yeah. generous of me. When the reality is that those, 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 there's just projections of the future. Right. And no one can tell the future. No matter what you thought was going to happen, no matter how careful you were, how smart your advisors were, how well-meaning they were, you're going to be wrong. So you have to have a system that adapts to you being wrong. And if you think about it, a startup is much more like a gamble than it is like a real company. Because right. the chance of you losing is extremely high. <laughs> and I've seen you know, people range from, you know, failure rates from 90% down to 30%. And uh, you know, some recent re reading I've done is about 50% of the startups fail to right. reach break even, which is much closer to a game of blackjack than a company that you can rely on for a job. That's true. So the model kind of borrows from the gambling space. Do you know how to play blackjack? Yes. So let's say you and I pretend to go, go, go play blackjack in Las Vegas. And we're friends, so you go in 50-50. That's not fair? Yes. So shake on it. <laughs> we're playing as a team, not against each other. Right. So we each go to Las, we go to Las Vegas. So you put a dollar down, and I put a dollar down. 
Now we don't know if we're going to win, right? right? We don't know how much we're going to win because different hands pay different amounts. We can pull three sevens and get jackpot or we can get blackjack and win some more. We don't know. We don't know. All we know is that you bet a dollar and I bet a dollar. That's it. So the dealer deals two aces. So what do you do with the aces? Uh, two more dollars? You split them. Okay. <laughs> you to split them two, put two, double, double down your bets, two more dollars. Two more I'm, dollars. If I'm out of cash and you're not, you put two more dollars down. Got it. So, so you've I bet three dollars. It's more money. I re, I've invested you, more. You've invested more at this point. You bet three dollars. I bet a dollar. That's right. Now we still don't know if we're going to win, right? We don't know how much we're going to win. All we can know for sure is that you bet three dollars and I bet a dollar. Does fifty-fifty sound fair anymore? Absolutely not. Should be seventy-five twenty-five. No. Well, yes, because yeah. I put two, three more dollars. Yeah, I put three dollars. So it's, it's unambiguous that it should be seventy-five twenty-five. So startups are exact the same thing. Instead of betting on cards, you're betting on ideas. I agree. And your share of the equity should be based on your share of the bets. So speaking of ideas, so let's just say that you're the idea man and I'm doing all the work. So will it be split? What's worth more? Is it the work or the idea? Well, what's an idea worth on the open market? Nothing. Well, it is. <laughs> it's worth something, if but you, if you're an a lot of people walk around with million dollar ideas. They, they never do anything with them. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. The only reason it's worth a million dollars is if you can generate revenue. That's true. So if you're an idea person, an inventor will get a royalty on their idea. Got it. So if I used to be the head of marketing for a large fishing tackle manufacturing company, and we had ideas coming to us all the time. And the rate that we paid for ideas was a 2% royalty on revenues generated. And that's, not, that's a pretty small revenue yeah. royalty, but it's a huge company. And we could generate more revenue than anybody else. So if you wanted to market your idea in the United States, in the fishing tackle world, you went with us for 2% okay. or go with our competitors for 5%, but much lower revenue. So the fair market rate for that idea was 2%. Got it. So if you go to a company and you do a royalty for the startup and don't get paid, that's your bet. And it's only a bet when it generates revenue. If it doesn't generate revenue, what do you do with your company? Close it down. You close it down or you pivot. Yeah, what, what, exactly. That's so right. companies pivot all the time. That means whatever idea we started with wasn't the idea we're going to finish with. So, we're, so we're, if you rewarded that person for the idea that didn't work, That's you'd true. be in trouble. And that happens all the time. Right. I see it all the time. It's like I'll keep 90% and give the team 5% to turn into something re real. True. When the reality is it's only worth what a royalty is worth. Got it. So you're saying it depends on who's all involved. So if I'm going to put in all the work, I'm going to put all the blood and sweat, I should technically deserve more. So it's a, it's a dynamic. It's dynamic. It changes it's dynamic. over time. So the betting continues until we reach break even. Got it. So for instance, if we're playing blackjack and we win that round, and instead of taking our chips off the table, we let it ride. And we keep playing and keep playing and keep playing, we win a million dollars. You still deserve 75% because you bet the initial bet. So we keep betting until break even, at which point we're no longer placing bets. You can keep playing with the house's money. We're no longer placing bets, which is important. Oh. So if I have a startup with all five of us, and I'm starting to do more work. Do I say, okay, guys, we need to go back and change the equity? It's dynamic, so it keeps changing over time. So every, time, every, day, you, every day you show up to work, you're making more bets. Every hour that goes by is a new bet. So every hour of the day, you're earning slices a day. So if you're worth $100,000 a year on the open market, as your fair market bet is $100,000, sure. that's 50 bucks an hour you're betting, which translates into 100 slices. You use a, a multiplier, which gives you a slice count. So every hour that goes by, you're betting 100 slices until you're no longer betting, and then the slices stop. So it adjusts all the time. So all the, all, the only thing you know for sure is you're going to get treated fairly. You may not know what your equity split is in any given time, but you always know you're going to get treated fairly. So the slicing pie formula is two times non-cash plus four times cash. And those two times and four times are multipliers. So I call them normalizers. Got it. So if you win a blackjack, what's your expected payout? It's whatever is better. Two times. Two times. That's your expected payout. Yeah. So use a 2x multiplier to reward you for putting non-cash contributions in because once you put it in, you're taking a high level of risk. So slicing pie rewards you and gives you incentive to stick around by giving you twice your, basically your time. Cash is a little different. If I paid you 100 bucks an hour to work for me and you want to buy this cup of coffee that costs $100, it would take you more than an hour to earn enough money because when I paid you, I paid Social Security and, and employment taxes. When you receive the money, you pay income taxes. And when you buy the coffee, you pay sales tax. So it might take you two hours to earn enough money. Okay. Plus, money is more scarce than time usually. Yes. Plus, there's interest rates and things that we deal with. So I use a 4x multiplier for cash to compensate for the fact that cash is, has a higher value. Plus, I want you, as an investor, I want you to think twice before you spend the money. So we use 4x for cash. So it's two slices per dollar for non-cash and 4x per dollar for cash contributions, including unreimbursed expenses, for instance. So we take the t your slices divided by all the slices, and that gives you your split at any given time. Just like your three chips divided by my by the four chips, and my one chip divided by four chips, gives you always gives you the perfect split. 
So when the pie freezes, it'll tell you exactly the answer you're looking for. And does it also tell you your fair market, market value in the app, or is that something you got to do outside and go? Well, you negotiate fair market value anyway. The beauty of slicing pie is it lets you run your company like you normally run a normal company. You make decisions based on the financial implications of what you're, you're, what you're buying. Um, so if I was going to hire you to work for me and I was going to pay you cash, that would be your fair market rate. And if I have the cash, I'll pay you cash. If I don't have the cash, I'll use slices. This cup of coffee isn't 100 bucks. It's $2 or $3. That's the fair market value. Whatever you're willing to pay, making a, fine, a sound financial decision is what you should pay with slicing pie. You, should, you use slices instead. And, and without slicing pie, you're just guessing. You're like, gosh, you're so important, you're worth X percent or 2 percent or shares are just funny money. With slicing pie, slicing pie makes the currency of the equity a real thing in, in your life and makes you think twice before you use it. If I know I'm giving up a dollar, four slices for every dollar I spend in expenses, I'm going to think twice before I spend the dollar. I'm not going to buy the expensive chair. I'm going to buy the cheap chair. I'm going to make decisions that are rational for a startup to make. So, Mike, when should a startup really start thinking about, you know, when should they start worrying about splitting up the equity? Like right now, I've, I'm all by myself, for instance. So I'm not ready to bring on an employee yet. I'm just working all night, hustling really hard. Spending your own money. Exactly, spending my own money, and, and I'm not ready to bring on the first employee. And when I do bring him, maybe I'm going to call him a co-founder because he's helping me do it. Right. Should I start at that point, or should I start when I'm logging in my hours and putting my dollars? You will, you will start worrying about it when it becomes an issue. <laughs> that's for so sure. That's when people start worrying a lot about it when it becomes an issue and they start thinking of bringing on a co-founder. The, nice the nice thing you can do is you can retrofit where you are. So what you'll do is you'll go back in time and think, when did I start ClickX in, in earnest? When I said, this, I'm doing this, I'm gonna, it's going to be a thing, and start doing it. You want to count your slices from that point on, your expenses, your time, and subtracting money you've taken out of the company, which is probably nothing at this point. Sure. So that'll give you your, your starting number of slices. Let's say you have 300,000 slices. Gotcha. And you go say, hey, Mike, I want you to come in as a partner, earning 100 slices an hour. And on day one, you'll have 300,000 slice, 300, slices, right. and I'll have no slices. But at the end of the first day, I'll have 1,000 slices, and you'll have 301,000 slices. But in a year from now, I may have 200,000 slices and you have 500,000 slices and our split starts looking a little more logical. At any given point, whatever we put in is what we, what we, what we risked. So let's say we break so even at the first thing. getting bigger and bigger. bigger there's endless number of slices. Or is it, there's only 100% points, right? right? But the slices, slices are, are infinite. Yeah, just chips on the table. Just keep throwing your bets down, right. keep throwing your bets down. So let's say I work for a week and we sell for a billion dollars. Well, you'll get most of that money. I might get $100,000, which That's reflects true. the amount of work that I put in. Thank you so much, Mike, for your time. I really, really appreciate it. You're welcome. We're, we're in the hustle world. <laughs> <laughs>